Stop wasting days connecting the dots between your budget and your actual results. Every month, finance teams globally drown in data, trying to figure out why the numbers moved. What if I told you you could get a full budget variance analysis, linking financial results to your operational drivers, with a full action plan in under 60 seconds? Stay tuned because we're about to show you the ultimate AI prompt to boost your FP&A speed by 10 times. This isn't just about spotting red or green numbers. It's about building a narrative. To do this, you need to force the AI to act like a senior financial analyst and connect the financials to the operational reality of the business. For this case, I use these inputs, income statement and related operational drivers like headcount, quantity sold, customer acquisition cost, billable utilization, website traffic, new customers count, etc. Now let's dive into analysis. The secret is in the prompt structure. You must tell the AI exactly what data it has, what it needs to do, and the format for the final output. Here is the powerful prompt we used. We'll break down the six crucial parts of this prompt. The role and core task. You are a senior FP&A analyst. Perform a budget variance analysis and last period variance analysis on the attached data. The data context. In the file attached, you have two reports, segments. A. Income statement. Amounts in thousands USD. B. Operational drivers, starting row 38. Amounts in USD, quantities, percent, and other units. Crucially, tells the AI what data is coming and how to read it. The core logic. Apply the best logic to catch relation between operational drivers and figures in the income statement. This forces the AI to use its financial knowledge, volume versus price, headcount versus salary, to explain the variances, the required outputs. Highlight key variances. Give me positive and negative impacts and red flags. Explain reasons for each variance. Keep it CFO ready. Crisp bullets, no filler, headline first writing. Ensures a full narrative explanation, not just numbers. Guarantees the output is presentation ready. The strategic next step. Give me an action plan and recommend what we can do to make an improvement. Turns the analysis into actionable strategy, the most valuable part for management. And finally, the constraints. Respect units. Profit and loss in USD thousands, drivers in mixed units. Be explicit with percentage points versus margins and with absolute deltas in USD thousands. Separate positive and negative impacts. Call out red flags. If you need this prompt, you can download it. Just find the download link in the video description. Now, let's see the results. Executive Summary the AI starts, as every good executive summary should, with the core conclusion, top line is good, profitability is not. This immediately grabs the management team's attention. We see revenue is strong, up 10% versus last year but slightly above budget. Solid news. But look at the profitability metrics. Gross margin eroded significantly, down from 70% last year to 65%. A massive 5 percentage point drop. EBITDA margin fell from 60% last year to 51%. Additional red flags, churn up, customer lifetime value down, and CAC up sharply. The key issues, according to the AI, boil down to cost control. Cost of services is up 29% versus last year, driven primarily by salaries, and operating expenses are up 55% versus last year. The final verdict is crystal clear. We are growing but buying growth too expensively. The strategic focus must shift from pure volume to unit economics and efficiency. I made this analysis in ChatGPT, but of course you can try to do the same in other AI models like Gemini, Claude, or Perplexity. Revenue, variance, and key drivers. Now we move into the data-driven narrative, looking at the performance of the five service lines. The AI shines here by linking the financial variance to the operational drivers. Take service line one, revenue is up nicely. However, the drivers tell a story of deteriorating fundamentals. New customers are up strong, 
but churn has tripled and customer lifetime value is down sharply. The conclusion, we're acquiring aggressively, but we're bringing in lower quality customers who leave faster and spend less. That's a massive red flag. Next, service line two. Revenue is up, which is great, but traffic is down and the average service price dropped from 3.4K to 2.9K. This suggests that growth is only achievable through deeper price discounting or relying on expensive paid channels, which is not sustainable and risks brand value. Service line three, we increased our physical footprint. Offices are up, but the quantity sold is down. This points directly to severe underutilization of capacity, meaning fixed costs per unit are skyrocketing. This is excellent driver-based analysis. Bottom line, we have overall revenue red flags indicated here. Higher churn and lower customer lifetime value. Price erosion, capacity utilization issue in service line three and overall conversion underperformance. Cost of services and gross margin. The erosion of the gross margin is largely explained by the cost of services section, particularly the massive increase in salaries. Salaries are up 49% versus last year, hitting 339 case. Why? The operational drivers are clear, headcount is up 10%, and the average salary is up a staggering 36%. We are paying significantly more for our staff. But the real kicker is the productivity driver. Billable utilization dropped from 55% to 51% and is well below the 60% budget. The interpretation, we hired more people, we paid them huge raises, but we got less productive time from them. This is the primary reason why labor cost growth, almost 49%, has far outpaced revenue growth, 10%. The savings from reducing subconsultants simply cannot offset this fundamental misstep in labor management. The result is a gross profit that is barely up versus last year with a margin percentage that is collapsing. Operating expenses, EBITDA, and bottom line. Moving below the gross margin line, the problem continues with operating expenses. Total OPEX is up 55% versus last year and 28% versus budget. This is not a one-time issue. This looks like structural overhead creep. The AI highlights three key structural red flags. Rent and insurance. Rent is up 300% versus last year and insurance is up over 400%. These are fixed recurring costs that have exploded. Why? We need an immediate review of these contracts. Software stack. Database and software costs are growing faster than revenue. Are we fully utilizing all those licenses and modules? Marketing efficiency. While total marketing spend is slightly down versus last year, the associated operational metric customer acquisition cost has almost doubled from 230 tools to $433. We are losing organic reach and paying a premium for every new customer. The net effect of these cost explosions is that despite strong revenue, EBITDA is down by 7% versus last year and net profit is down by 8.2%. The cost structure is destroying the value of the top line growth. Action plan and recommendations. Warp. This is where the AI becomes your strategic partner, delivering solutions, not just problems. Now, the action plan is organized, clear, and focused on reversing the negative trends identified by the drivers. First, on revenue quality. We need to fix churn and CLV. The recommendation is to immediately launch a retention program, focusing on account reviews and loyalty offers to segment and retain high-value customers. We must also stop underpricing by limiting discounts and introducing value-based pricing tiers to restore Service Line 2's margin. Second, on cost of services and productivity. The most urgent step is a headcount freeze. We must stop hiring until utilization returns to the budgeted 60%. We must also audit the 36% salary increase to ensure it aligns with seniority and increase our external billing rates to compensate. Third, on overheads and structure. We need to perform an immediate contract review on the massive rent and insurance increases. We should investigate options to sublease, consolidate offices, 
and ruthlessly identify and cancel underused software licenses to halt the OPEX creep. This is about prioritizing spending that provides a clear return on investment. How to present it. The final step of the AI prompt gives us the ultimate summary line for the CEO or the board. I got a board ready two slide storyline you can literally paste into PowerPoint. It is written in CEO board language, focused on decisions, not accounting. Slide one is about performance summary, what happened and why containing a key message to the board. Slide two is about management response, risks and action plan. Final tip, if you want a board ready PowerPoint presentation, just copy all reports and these findings in Genspark AI slides agent and ask for PowerPoint presentation. This is one example of my outputs I got from Genspark. Many slides effectively designed. And that's it. This is just one idea to show you the possibilities of generative AI models. Watch my next video on how to create a financial model using AI and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.